So the next thing we're going to investigate are the properties of the circuit itself and how that affects the current. And so I've got the light bulb connected to um, my battery emulator over there still. And right now the, the voltage setting on there is low, like 1.5 volts. And if we increase the voltage, then we see a brighter light bulb, which means not only more energy, but also more charges, more current. Um, the other way that I can affect the current is by changing what the circuit is actually made of, what the, the charges have to go through in order to go from one end of the battery to the other end of the battery. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a resistor. And these are the resistors we use in class. They're, they're nice, um, big, rubber-coated um, resistors. Um, and the reason that they're rubber-coated is so that they don't generate um, as much heat. They don't get as hot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this circuit right here, and I'm going to put the resistor in there. And so what you notice is the light bulb now is dimmer, even though I still have it connected to the same battery. I can short that circuit, um, short the resistor, by connecting a wire like this. And you'll notice that when I bypass the resistor, that the bat, the light bulb rather gets brighter, and so that you would refer to that as a short circuit. Like I've given charges an alternate way to go around the path besides having to go through my resistor. So when the charges have to go through the resistor, they are slowed down and less of them pass through each second, and so that makes the current smaller. So what we're going to do here is we're going to investigate um, the current as a function of the electric potential as it passes through just this resistor. And so we're going to get rid of the light bulb, we're going to connect some meters, and then see how the current is affected by just this thing. And then we'll come back and we'll do the same thing for my light bulb, and we're going to see how these are um, both resistors, but they have slightly different properties. Okay, so I've got this set up now where I've got just the green resistor in a circuit with my battery. And I've set this meter here to be an ammeter. And so it's connected um, across this junction right here, across this gap rather. Um, and so current's going to go from my battery through the yellow wire into this meter. And then back out through the other yellow wire, through this little short wire, through the green resistor and then back to the battery. And then this other meter I've got set up to measure voltage. So it's gonna measure the electric potential across that resistor. And so it's gonna give us a negative sign because the voltage drops as charges go through a resistor. But when we, we're gonna graph this, we're actually just gonna graph the magnitude of those voltages so that we get a positive number instead of negative numbers. So I'm going to put my battery emulator over here on um, 1.5 volts which is the lowest setting, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And you'll notice that I've got a current of 0.28 amperes and a voltage drop of 1.45. Let that stabilize, and then we're just going to gradually click the battery up to higher potentials and see how these two numbers change. So if I click it up one more setting, you see now I've got a bigger current, 0.41 amperes, and a bigger voltage drop of 2.1 volts. I'm going to click it up another stop notch. So bigger current, bigger voltage. That's 4.5 volts on the battery emulator. 5 volts. The six volt setting, the random 7.2 volt setting. So notice each time I do this, the current and the potential are both going up. Now it's on 10, 12, 13.8, and then this is the highest setting. Okay, so my highest current was 2.04 amperes at a voltage of 10.2 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So the next thing we're going to do is graph that data um, as a, we're gonna put 
voltage on the y-axis and current on the x-axis and kind of see how the um, current is changing with the increased voltage. All right, so looking at the data that we collected, I've got the voltage here on the left side and the current here on the right side. And you can see that when I graph the current as a function of the potential difference, the voltage drop, that I get this really nice, beautiful straight line that has a slope of 0.2. And so what that tells us is that the current is proportional to the voltage and it goes up at a linear rate. So the effect that the circuit itself has on the current is constant. So typically what we do, instead of graphing it as current with respect to potential, is we flip those two and we put potential on the y-axis and current on the x-axis. And I think the reason that we do that is so instead of having a slope of 0.2, we have a slope of like 5. 5 is a little bit easier number to work with. And so we can write an equation like this. Delta V is equal to 5 volts per ampere times I. So volts per ampere would be the unit for that slope. And we just give that slope the name resistance. And so the slope of that line, the rate at which the potential increases as the current increases, we just call that resistance. And that's a function of the circuit itself, the material that the um, charges are trying to move through. So we could write it in y equals mx plus b form, like delta v equals i times r, or kind of more commonly, i equals the voltage drop over the resistance. And this is often referred to as Ohm's law. And so next, let's investigate what happens when we start messing around with the material that the circuit is made of. The next thing I want to show you is what happens when we change a resistor out for another resistor. Um, and so I've gotten rid of the voltmeter because I'm just going to click my battery at the same voltages for both of these things. But I've kept the ammeter so I can still measure the current. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare a green resistor with a red one and a blue one. And so if I turn on my battery emulator, I just got to set to the three volt setting right now. So right now with the green resistor and a voltage of three volts on my battery emulator, I get a current of about 0.56 amperes. I'm not gonna leave that connected very long because that'll get hot. So 0.56 for the green resistor. If I connect the blue resistor in here, so same circuit, same everything else. Notice that I get a smaller current. And so what that tells me is that the blue resistor has a higher resistance. It doesn't let charges go through it as well compared to the green resistor. And so I'm now gonna replace this with the red resistor. Just like that. And we'll notice that the current is even smaller for the red resistor. And so the green resistors are relatively low resistance. They let charges pass through them very well. Whereas the red resistors have a high resistance. They do not let charges pass through them as well as the green resistors and the blue are somewhere in the middle. And so low resistance, medium resistance, relatively high resistance. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do here is see if that graph of potential versus current gives me a straight line for a light bulb. And so I put a light bulb in my circuit and I've also included a red resistor. And the reason that I've included a red resistor is because my battery voltages don't go down enough for me to be able to do this without burning my light bulb out as I get to higher voltages. And so because I want a bunch of readings to make a graph, I'm going to reduce the voltage going to the light bulb by using a resistor in series with it. And so when I set it on the lowest setting, so 1.5 volts, um, here's my current meter, my ammeter, here's my volt meter across my light bulb. You'll notice that the voltage across my light bulb is not 1.5, it's about a tenth of that actually, so 0.15. And then the current is 0 0.06 amperes. And so right now my light bulb has current going through it, but it's not enough current to actually make it glow. And so that's our, kind of our starting conditions. So we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier where we turn the voltage up. I'm gonna stop turning it up when my light bulb gets really bright so I don't burn it out. And we're gonna see if we kind of get the same linear relationship between current and voltage.
here we go. So next highest setting, so over here, 0.2 volts, 0.1 amp of current. So now it's glowing bright enough to actually notice. And that's at a voltage of just under one volt, so 0.96, and the current through it is 0.17. So we're gonna keep clicking our battery emulator up. So 1.25 volts, 0.19 amps. 1.54 and 0.21 amps. 2.1 volts and 0.25 amperes. 2.98 volts and 0.29 amperes. 3.48 volts, 0.32 amps. 4.47 volts and 0.36 amperes. 5.6 volts, 0.41 amperes. And then 6.28 volts. Oh, my light bulb just burned out. All right, so I'll have to go back to the video to kind of get that one. So what we're going to do next is graph our data of potential and current and see if we get a nice straight line like we did for just the resistor. Okay, so looking next at the data of voltage and current we got for my light bulb, um, when I graph it, you'll notice that instead of a really nice straight line like we had before, we get this really like wicked curve, almost like a parabola going on. Um, you'll notice that it's straight for a few regions, but if you look at the very first potential we did compared to the last, it definitely makes a really nice curve, not a straight line. So what that tells us is that the effect that the light bulb has on the circuit is not constant the same way it was for the resistor that I did. And so what we do is we say that the light bulb is non-ohmic, that's how we kind of describe that. And what that means is that the resistance of the light bulb is changing. And as it turns out, it changes with temperature. As the light bulb gets hotter, its resistance changes. And that's going to be true of every material. And so if I pass enough current through that resistor, I would eventually get the resistance to change um, after it got like really, really hot. And so that, that point where a resistor goes from being ohmic to non-ohmic is going to depend on the material that it's made out of. And so we're going to investigate that a little bit later. So what we need to be able to do for right now is if we graph, or uh, measure rather, currents and potentials, we need to be able to, to um, be able to get the resistance from the slope of a graph of potential versus current. And then we need to also be able to tell if something is ohmic or non-ohmic. Does it have a constant resistance or is the resistance changing?